Welcome to Pastor Mike Quick Shots, episode 106. 106 times I've been coming uh, at you on Facebook and YouTube and anywhere else you might be getting this. Uh, hopefully that if you find something good in this message today, you'll like it, you'll share it, and then other people can hear it and see it too. Uh, I have been filled with the Holy Spirit lately. And hopefully it's going to come through to you. I am Pastor Michael Mitchell. I'm currently the pastor at Maplewood and DeGraff United Methodist Churches. And I know that we've changed the storyline this week and for the last few weeks. And so I am really hungry. I'm really excited. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is really attempting to move in a way uh, to teach us about community and about how important it is. I believe, without a shadow of a doubt, that the pandemic and the shutting down of things was a horrible detriment to our society, to our culture, to our people. Not just talking about people of the church. I'm talking about people in general. It was damaging. It was horrible. And it was uh, hurt, hurtful. I mean, there's things that we are still, two years later, still recovering from and may never recover from. One of those things is relationships and, and loving each other and being together. See, God created mankind to be a relational being. He literally created Adam, and then he looks at Adam, gives him all these animals, gives him all this stuff, all these jobs, and he's like, man, there's something wrong with him. He's alone. He's lonely. And if I made him in my image, I don't want him to be alone. I want him to be relational. Because me, God, I'm, I'm like three in one. I've got three different persons in my, in my unique uh, Trinitarian God. I've got these three people, and that's a group, and that's a community. And now I've created this Adam in my own image, and now he's failing. And so I create this other part of him, use part of him to create another being, to go along with him. From that moment, God has created mankind to be relational, to be together, to be physically in proximity to one another. And we get stronger when we are in that proximity. Now, unfortunately, what we've had over the last decade or so, maybe not even a decade, it might only be about the last five years, is the advent of social media, uh, the forcefulness of pandemic to send us all inside of our homes, but to still have access to this social media. We are not afraid of running into somebody uh, on the street, so we can say whatever we want online. We can spit off all kinds of nonsense. We can lie. We can do whatever we want in this space because there's no consequence. And yet there is consequence in the real world. We have this moment where social media has grabbed our attention so much so we don't hunger attention and, and, and togetherness anymore because why would I want to do that? We've, we've basically created and made people into introverts, even though some of them weren't an introvert before this. Community is important. Togetherness is important. And I cannot stress enough what it is about the first century church that community was paramount. It was paramount that they got together. It was paramount that they met in secret to save their lives. And they needed each other for uplifting, for encouragement, for meals, for shelter. They needed each other for every basic human need. And now we've created this world where we don't need that anymore. Well, I don't need somebody to, to, to help me with a house. I don't need somebody to help put food on my table. I don't need somebody to help me put clothes on my children's back. Yeah, you do. You may not think you do because you've got it all figured out. But that's when God calls you to be a part of helping those that don't. That's the part of the community. That's why this works. I started a new study called Creating Community, and it's written by Andy Stanley and Bill Willits. And there are so many good pieces in here. So many good things. And if you're on version, check it out on the Bible app. I want you to hear this statement from earlier this week. That is what God has called the church to be about, creating environments where authentic community can take place, 
building transformative communities where people can experience oneness with God and with one another, unique communities that are so satisfying and so compelling that they create thirst in a watching world. Oh my. Begins to bring a whole new definition to the thirst trap, right? <laughs> in a good way. It's a thirst trap in a good way because you're going to get, you're going to get thirst. You're thirst satisfied if you come to this church. I think as community, we have to understand that, that we are stronger when we're together and we are divided and are alone. We are weak. And that is exactly, unfortunately, what some people want. They want people divided. They want them alone. They want them weak. They're easier to control. However, when you go into the scriptures, you see the importance of community. It's over and over and over. I'm not even going to hit on, the, on Acts chapter 2 and on the epistles written by Paul and Peter and James and John. I'm not even going to go into those because those are absolute classic pieces of historical documentation that celebrate and support the idea of community. Look it up. Read a book, right? <laughs> I'm going to go to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Uh, there's more to it, but I'll give you verse 12. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Wow. This goes back. This takes us to a place where we understand we're better when we're together. We're not only better, we're stronger. We can withstand the enemy. We have, hold each other accountable. We lift each other up in prayer. We are helping one another to get through their needs. I mean, I'm listening. I'm listening to people within our church bodies. They are reaching out to people who are sick. They are reaching out to people who need help. They are reaching out, even if just to say, I love you and I care about you. I see this happening in people. It's what's making, it's what's making our churches attractive it's it's going to be what makes the body of christ come to life for people it is not about realizing uh well i can have a, a relationship with god without this church i don't need organized church to have god in my life you're absolutely right i've been there done that i didn't need an organized church there's people inside that building that hurt me and let me down i don't need organized church i know god and i've got a relationship with him and that's what matters Unfortunately, when I don't have other believers around me and I don't have support staff around me and I don't have help around me, well, I become pretty weak. I got to the point where the, the enemy was attacking me and, and leading me astray. And unfortunately, I didn't have those support group friends. I didn't have accountability. I had whatever I wanted. And that is nowhere to be. Because when you have everything, you have nothing. When you have accountability and you have a togetherness with a group of people, you grow spiritually. You grow in ways that the world cannot provide and fix for you. This is the amazing part. It's about letting go of the things that are, that are physical, things that you can see, things that you can touch, because they're temporary and they're meaningless. They don't have any value. But that's why it's amazing when we get together as friends and family, as people and believers, it is such a healthy acknowledgement that we are relational beings. The study, uh, Creating Community, goes on to say this. What we soon realized is that sustained spiritual growth is not well nurtured by an environment where, where people simply sit in rows listening to messages in complete anonymity. Sustained growth takes place where people are personally challenged and encouraged in their relationships with God and others. Your relationships with God and others can get stagnant. They can be stale. But when we are in a, a group that's holding each other accountable, that's pushing each other towards spiritual growth, those relationships then tend to blossom. I was thinking about this, and, and I thought about 
a very unique situation that goes back into the Old Testament. See, Moses thought that because he led them out of Egypt, because he was the guy that had to go up on Mount Sinai to bring down the Ten Commandments, he thought he was the guy. He thought he had to be the guy. He had to be everything that these people needed. And so his his father-in-law is watching him one day. And he goes uh, every day from morning to night. He sits and listens to the complaints, and he is the judge. He was a judge that listened to everyone's complaints and everyone's needs and desires. As he did this, and he walked through this every day, his father-in-law is watching him and realizing that it's not going to be long before Moses trying to do this all on his own is going to wear out. In Exodus 18, verse 14, this is what happens when Moses' mother-in-law, or (laughs) father-in-law, pulls him aside and talks to him. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he asked, what are you really accomplishing here? Why are you trying to do this all alone while everyone stands around you from morning till evening? We're, We're not supposed to have all the answers on our own. We're not supposed to do all the work on our own. We're supposed to be doing all of these things together, side by side, lifting others up when they fall, helping others when they can't seem to figure it out, lifting them, guiding, directing, encouraging. All of these things are supposed to be what the church is. We've lost this church. We've lost this body of Christ. We are relying on a guy to stand in a pulpit to lead meetings to run the show, and that's not at all what God had ever intended. If that's the case, why didn't why didn't Eve listen to, to Adam? And, and he said, no, don't eat that fruit. Why didn't he do that? Because they're, they're community, they're together, they're gonna, they're gonna have different ideas, and they were living together. It's about the relationship, it's not about the the, the dictatorship. I go on into creating community. Yeah, I've got three of these slides for you this week. I go on in Creating Community by Andy Staley and Bill Willits. Listen to this. The role of the group in an individual's life is to support the growth process. We do this by applying the ABCs of group life. Accountability, belonging, and care. We promote accountability by appropriately challenging one another. Notice that word appropriately. We encourage belonging by authentically connecting with one another. And we provide care by compassionately serving one another. Friends, I'm not sure where you are on your journey. I'm not sure what it looks like for you to be in community. I'm not sure. if Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe you don't want community. And I understand it more than anybody because I've been there and I've walked through it. I've still got to look people in the face and say, hey, how are you doing? It's good to see you. Even when they were the same people that hurt me. I had to to, to realize that that God was calling me to something and I was going to have to step into a mess of hurt and I was going to have to put myself in a vulnerable, vulnerable position in order for God to open me up and use me. Maybe you're there. Maybe you're not ready yet. Whatever it is, God has the ability to heal the hurt in your life, and he has the ability to use you right where you are to change the life of other people. And along the way, he's going to open doors for you too. Friends, I hope you'll join us. We're going to continue this talk about community this weekend, uh, 9 o'clock in Maplewood on Sunday, 1030 in DeGraff on Sunday with a carry-in lunch afterwards in DeGraff. Hopefully you'll join us. Uh, Be part of this family. Be part of this community. Let things die that need to die and come back to life with people that want to come back to life with you. Friends, will you join me in this closing prayer? Gracious and ever-present God, may your love and compassion flow through me and to those around me. Give me pity and concern for their misfortunes and suffering. Give me the compassion and empathy I need to understand what those in our community are going through. Help me to love them well. Help me not to judge or condemn, but rather come alongside them 
to offer support and to be your hands and feet. I pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Friends, I hope that you have a great rest of your week. Find the time to study. Find the time for reflection. Find the time for prayer. And even better, find time to do all of those things with some other people that care about you. Friends, I hope that you have a great rest of your week and enjoy the spirit. He's working on us. He's working on us. I love it. Have a good time, everybody. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.